Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and today for Stamp School, we're gonna take a look at using chalks. And chalks can come in all sorts of different forms. They can come in cakes like this, also called decorator's chalk. They can also come in sticks and larger pans like pan pastels. They're all gonna work for this technique today, so grab what you have. Just make sure if it's a stick form that it is a chalky pastel and not an oily pastel. And this video is brought to you by artneco.com. We're gonna be using some of their stamps, and they do have a deal. You can save 10% if you just mention the Frugal Crafter when you order, they will refund you the discount, or you'll get free shipping if your order's over $50, which is nice too. You actually get the deal that's greater. So if the 10% off would have been, you know, 20 bucks and free shipping would have only been $5, you'd get the $20, $20 dis discount. You know, you get the bigger discount because that's how they roll over at artneco.com. They're, they're really good people. Okay, so we're going to make a card using only one sheet of cardstock. And actually, I was very inspired to make this because um, two of my friends got married this weekend. And I just want to dedicate this video to Audrey and Moya and wish you years and years and years and years of a happy, happy marriage. So I love you guys and I'm so happy for you. Um, I took a piece of cardstock, cut it in half and then I just, um, so this is eight and a half inches wide, so then I scored at two and an eighth inch from each side and I made this gatefold card base. Okay, I'm going to set this aside because we don't need this right now, but that's what the basis is going to be. Then I took a quarter sheet of that cardstock and I embossed it using an embossing folder. And um, these are used with a die cut machine. You roll it through the die cut machine and the pressure um, makes the lovely embossed designs. So the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to color this with chalk. So I'm gonna set that right on my scrap paper. And the nice thing about this little kit here is that um, there's actually little pom-poms that you can use to um, to pick up the color from your chalk. You could also use a Q-tip or a, um, a cotton ball, anything like that. It doesn't have to be fancy to work just as well. And I think I will do some, let me do a little bit of yellow, which won't be very, uh, very strong, but I just kind of want, um, a little bit of a blush on here and you know you can rub an ink pad over this to give you you know to color the raised areas but you get such a nice soft look when you do it with chalk um, this chalk happens to be pearly so it's got a little bit of a mica in there so it shimmers a little bit so that's really pretty um, but you can use regular plain chalks too I'm gonna grab that a little bit better and these applicators can also be purchased separately, but like I said, you can even just pick up a, a little white pom-pom and and, uh, and do it the same way. Pom-poms work really, really well, and you can get a big bag of white ones at the craft store for a few dollars. It's um, it's way cheaper than buying like specialty stamping, scrapbooking pom-poms for this purpose. And then um, I do like this because I can keep a different color with each um, with each like chalk that I'm using. There's a little space for that, but. I mean, you can easily put pom-poms in a baggie. It's not like you need to do that. I'm going to use a little bit of pink. Oh, and I want to apologize if you hear any, like, loud, not really loud, but if you hear any um, <laughs> footsteps, don't worry. Your house isn't haunted. It is summer vacation, and my kids are upstairs roaming around and, and doing their thing. So, uh, so just excuse the elephants that you might hear. I think a little green might be kind of pretty in this. A little green down here. And you're not going to see all of this, so don't worry about making a mistake or if your colors aren't perfectly blending the way you want, really don't worry about it. Now, we're kind of rubbing the um, the pigment in, so there really isn't a need to fix it. But if you feel like you want to, like you're just kind of worried that it's going to smudge on somebody's hand, you can use um, some hairspray and cheaper is better. So if you've got like the cheap Aquanet aerosol hairspray or whatever is on sale that you know, you'd never want to use on your hair because it might make it too crunchy. That's what you want to use as a fixative because it doesn't contain the oils and the silicones that your more expensive hairspray that you like to use on your hair would contain. So cheaper is better in the case of using hairspray for a fixative. Now I'm actually going to use my finger here and I am going to rub it in there because the oils on my hand will actually act as a little bit of a fixative. Just make sure your hands are clean otherwise you might get dirt on your card and then that won't look, uh, that won't look very good. And uh, and I always wash my hands frequently because I have children and who knows what what things you're going to pick up <laughs> between the children and the chickens. Who knows? So I'm just right, wiping it. It also gives it that extra um, blending and the extra security that I'm going to be removing any extra dust. Now, see, it's just a very soft, subtle look, but I think it's really, really pretty. And then you can decide how you want to uh, you want to arrange it on your card. So basically, where these are going to go is right here. And just be careful handling your card base that you don't get um, smudges on there. They're going to go here on this panel. And I will want to trim down a little bit um, on the long side just so that I get a nice border. But 
that's just to give you that idea right there. Now, another way I like to use chalk is actually as an ink. So what you want to do is use either a clear ink pad like um, Versamark or uh, a Magic Medium pad like that. Uh, you know, the per come with the perfect pearls. Any clear sticky ink is going to work good. Even glycerin that you get from the health food store that'll work perfect too. You just want to make sure your um, stamp is good and inked. Now, if you find that you have a new stamp and it's not holding the ink, um, wash it and then do it again because sometimes a brand new stamp will have like a little bit of mold release in there for how it comes off of the um, when it comes out of the vulcanizer and that will keep your ink from sticking so usually just clean it with a stamp cleaner or some baby shampoo and dry it and you're good to go so since this is a big stamp I'm just putting my paper on top and rubbing the back plus I just got it and I haven't mounted it yet so it works great for <laughs> all easy stampers here and you probably can't see that too well, but there's um, it's it's almost watermarked. You can kind of see there's a little bit darker area where that clear ink is. Now before that dries, I'm going to again go in with my chalk, and I am going to um, I'm going to dab. Okay. Now you can see that some, you can kind of start to see the Eiffel Tower being brought out here because it is picking up. It's the ink is sticking to or the chalk rather is sticking to where the ink is. Now I could rub the chalk right on the plain um, cardstock. This is a very smooth cardstock so not a lot would want to stick. Unlike this is the same cardstock but it's got all those raised edges to grab the chalk. Since this is um, not embossed it's just gonna mainly stick where the ink is. And I like to begin by dabbing this on rather than just rubbing it because sometimes you, you might get a little heavy-handed with your ink and then um, it might smear the ink like if you have any like wet areas of ink that's you got to kind of catch it you want it you want the ink um damp but you don't want it like greasy you don't want like a greasy puddle of ink on there and if you freshly inked your pad sometimes that can happen so that's why i wanted to do it like that and i'm just going to go in with any of the colors that i've used on the background because i know they're all going to match so it's all kind of fair game and then when it does start to dry, you could actually rub it a little bit more. And we're going to rub it to uh, to lock it down, too. I just want to make sure I'm not going to get anything um, get anything smeared, if I can help it. And I also try to look for um, for elements in the, uh, in the design that I can kind of do in a different color, like the word Paris. It's kind of tough if you can't really, <laughs> since you're doing clear ink, you can't really see every little detail. But I try to... Um, kind of like isolate some of those designs and get some of those uh, areas to stand out a little bit more. And now I am going to go in and just kind of rub around the edges, try to figure out what the edge of my design is. A little bit in there. And maybe I'll do a little bit of blue as well just because I feel like it needs a little bit of darker color to make it really pop. There's like a little banner there. I think I'll do that in the blue. And this little airplane up there. See if I can get that to stand out a little bit more. And then maybe just rouge the edges with my blue here. And then I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. I am going to rub this with my paper towel so that it can really push the um, ink, the chalk into the ink. So see, as I do that, we start to get our clearer image. And our colors blend a little bit. And then the whole panel is going to have a very subtle shimmer to it because of the type of uh, chalk that that is. Isn't that pretty? and get a really just a really soft lovely impression now i think i'm going to see if i can find a die but you could also cut it out with decorative scissors or a paper trimmer to trim this out so that we can put our card together i've decided to go with this um kind of brackety label shape because i know a lot of you guys have this die so i just figured it would be easier for you to replicate it if you wanted to and since this is a, th a really thick cardstock this is the um it's uh i think it's the michael's recollection 110 pound it's just a really thick one you can actually see a very pretty kind of like um 
embossed edge from this die. This is uh, one of the Darice ones. It's um, it's kind of cheaper than the Spellbinders line, which is kind of nice. So if you don't have any dies, they have a lot of the basic nested shapes um, for, you know, way less. So that's kind of nice. And let's take a look here. I thought it'd be also really pretty to do some sort of, oh, I just, and that's so pretty just on it, on its own. And then when we get the little embossed behind there, it's just so lovely. And actually, now that I'm looking at it, I don't think, I think I'm gonna, I'd wanna put this down, but I'm, I'm thinking maybe I don't wanna trim this smaller because I think it's kind of pretty having it kind of come right up to the middle like that. So that's what I think I'm gonna do. Sometimes, you know, it's sometimes what you think you're gonna do and what you actually do are different once you see how it all comes together. I'm gonna go right ahead and put my adhesive right on my panel. Just remember if you, I've got this like tear away sheet. These colors are really light, so I'm not too worried about it. But look, I did get a little bit of smudge right there. Um, if you get a smudge on your card, you can clean it up with an eraser. Like uh, you want to do it like a soft, um, one of those soft white erasers, and that will take it right up. Um, or if you're working, working on a pad like this, you can always tear off your top sheet if you feel like you have too much chalk underneath. If you're working with darker colors, I think it would be really um, a really good idea to take off that top sheet. But with a with a pastel colors like this, I don't think it's that big of a deal because it will brush right off. Because remember, you know, that, that card base is smooth. Even if we get our fingerprints on there, it's not going to, um, it's not going to stay and show as much as if it was like a rougher paper or if it had um, embossing or ink or something on it. So there we have that middle panel. I thought it'd be also really, pr oh, it's so it's just elegant. And, um, I love it. Um, I also thought it'd be pretty to do some ribbon. So I'm going to do a couple different types of ribbon. I got some narrow seam binding, which you could uh, spray with water and scrunch and let it dry and have a beautiful crinkle to it. Or you can use it plain like I am. And I am going to kind of figure out how much I'm going to need. Um, so I'm going to tie this around and something I try to do, I can't always do it, but I try to whenever I can is I will tie my bow while it's still on the spool because that, that way I, I can cut off just the right amount of ribbon and I don't waste any. So there's a little tip for you if you can. And I want my bow over to the edge here. I just think having like two kind of semi sheer, um, ribbons look really pretty together. Plus we're doing almost white on white. So um, it adds a little bit of texture and interest because we don't have a lot of big colors kind of kind of to play with. Okay, and see, so we just have a very simple bow there and I'm gonna trim that with my ribbon scissors so it doesn't fray. And my ribbon scissors simply, they're like your sewing shears. Anything you use just for fabric and you don't use for paper and other things so they don't get dull. You know, just save a, save a pair of scissors and they can be your, your ribbon scissors. And then when I adhere this, I'm only going to adhere this to one side. So let me pull that ribbon over as much as I can. And then I'm just going to adhere it under one side. And I'm going to use hot glue because this is going to trap my ribbon and it's going to trap the, um, the panel. So you'll be able to open your card. Otherwise you've just glued your card shut. So that's why you don't want to do that on both sides. You just want to do it on one side. So you don't glue your entire card shut. So if you can see kind of under there, that it's only adhered on this side. So then, look how simple that is. And you can embellish it a little bit more if you want. Like maybe if you had a scrap of that white paper, you could die cut some flowers. Um, so then when you go to open it, untie your bow here, then you can open it up and you could have a sentiment in the center and the ribbon's not gonna get lost because it's actually attached underneath there. So there's a very quick and easy card that you can do. And it also showed you how to use chalk. So I hope you try that. Chalks are so much fun to use. They're a very affordable supply. And um, I think you'll really like them. And remember, if you have some chalk sticks in your stash already, they're going to work just as fine. You don't have to go buy anything new. Um, and they may be a little more, more versatile if you also like to paint. If you don't like to paint, and you just want to use them for cards. I recommend a set something like this where you have the little applicators in a variety of colors. You can even use eyeshadow for this. So if you've got some eyeshadows that they're too bright, you don't like, they work perfect for this and it's not going to harm a thing if you use them for that. I want to thank you so much for uh, crafting with me today. Check out our sponsor, artneko.com. Mention the Frugal Crafter to save 10% on your order or get free shipping if your order is over 50. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.